Okay, welcome to this afternoon's episode of Llama Drives. Well, Llama doesn't drive again. Des is driving with special guest, DC Rainmaker. I'm sitting. Ray, how you doing? Good, it's all good. Big, long days. This is the end of day two for us here at Seattle 2019. We're driving home, it's a long drive, and in long drives, I usually set a camera up and talk bikes. I'm bringing the boys with, well, I'm with the boys, not bringing them with me. I'm in for the ride, and so are you. A few things to chat about, our rides, um, the experience of the show. This is my first time, Des's first time at the Sea Otter Classic. What is the Sea Otter Classic? We'll try and answer that one, and uh, we just have a chat about uh, other things that pop up along the way. So boys, how have you been, last two days? Um, great. Good show. Um, a bit tired. A bit tired. <laughs> a lot tired. <laughs> a lot tired. Yeah. So between uh, the rides that Shane and I did in San Francisco, and uh, these rides so far, I think I've put in, and I, I'm going to talk this yeah. way, four thousand meters of climbing this week so far. So yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good. This has been on, on, on. Okay. Uh, you've ridden every day. Um, uh, no, I've not ridden every day, but I went for that uh, run. Um, you, that's right. Yep. Yeah, and you set some PBs during that as well. So I did. So yeah, awesome. my TSS is probably in the four thousands. I don't know something like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm I'm doing great, but a little bit a little bit tired. These guys have been out double days here with the demo bikes. And Ray, in the back. I'm in the back. Do you have enough space? Uh, it's a little it's a little snug, but the important part is we got three bikes in here. We are ready to roll for tomorrow morning. Uh, so it's it's all good. Yeah. So yeah, I've been. Been riding with Des off road a lot. Um, we did a gravel ride all three of us yesterday morning, which was awesome. We survived. Uh, yep. There were some sketchy moments there. Yeah. I, I think my funniest one was when uh, we were stopping and setting the different gear shifting modes in the uh, Force E tap. <laughs> and Des and I had rolled down and clipped in straight away. And Ray was still looking down. And just as he looked up and hadn't clipped in yet, there was this big, um, I guess, channel in the. <laughs> Des and I went, bunny hop, bunny hop. I've turned around. I'm like, I hope Ray doesn't bang, bang. <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't wasn't kept, so smooth. Kept it upright though. But then you, you uh, Ray, Ray bought a pair of zip wheels after that. So. <laughs> <laughs> they were fine. They were fine. It's, rental. A, it's a rental. It's rental. It's a rental. Yes. Right. But uh, no. So yeah, like you guys, you guys were down in San Francisco, up in San Francisco, riding and all that jazz for a few days. But I came off of being in Kansas, running for a few days, and uh, so I came into this like you guys, not super fresh. And then we doubled down on it with double rides every day so far here. Um, out in the sun. It's funny because it's not super hot by like temperature standards. Like um, right now it says it's yeah. 64 degrees in the car. So by for metric folks that is boom in the corner of the screen. Um, but it's hot because it's just sun like just really sun, really dry. We I went and root off the red nose, Randy. I got red. I've got my. I am sunburnt. Even coming out of Australian summer, still sunburnt from here. But it's yeah. not. Oh, it's a bit dark. So Ray's coming back from. You could work at the Connect IQ Summit. Yep, Connect IQ Summit. I will link below to Ray's presentation there, which runs for about forty-five or so. Yeah, about that. Good, good stuff there. Links below to that presentation over on Ray's channel. So, gravel day one. That we wrote the, um, and I did put up my take, my very, very light on skim across the surface take on SRAM Force ETAP Axis 12 speed. Is that, that's still get it right? Yeah, that's correct. Yes. Yeah. Um, on the giant Revolt? Yes. Yep. I, the name Revolt, I just keep wanting to say Revolting. I don't know, the Revolt, I get, yeah. Anyhow. Yeah, I wouldn't have gone with that name. No, Revolt doesn't really seem no. that, yeah, it's not like you're going to throw up on something. Yep. <laughs> but that was good. I actually felt a bit of that. There's no, there's no like connotation associated with revolt. That's a positive thing that I can think of. Yeah, like trying it's, any spin is kind of hard. Yeah, yeah, it's bad. That's just bad. It's like calling the giant bad, which is too bad because it's actually a perfectly fine bike. But I, I liked it. Yeah, actually, I did. it was fun. It was yeah. great. We're all on the same the same bikes, um, yep. different sizes, obviously. Actually, except Des and I. Did we on medium large yesterday? Uh, no, or actually, I was on medium. medium you were on medium, medium large, large yeah. and Ray, you were on the large. I think so. Yeah, yeah. So we have all yeah. bases covered there. Mm -hmm. uh, heaps of fun. Heaps of fun, and uh, yeah, those tires on those. There's a few grooves that I rode through, and they stuck well. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't race that. That'd yeah. take a lot of skill to race off road. Race on road like the tarmac we're on now, mm -hmm. and it's easy. You don't have to think about the surface. Mm -hmm. But having to think about surface plus also other riders around you, that would be pretty hectic. Des, have you raced off road like that on yes, that actually, kind of trail? Yes, kind of, uh, uh, yeah, that's actually kind of my highlight race of the year. Race slash ride is a. 100 mile gravel ride actually so it's um it's a beast of a ride and you're definitely done after that but how long does it take to establish uh to things to settle down obviously the start of a race like that would be insane no actually it's a, one of those mellow starts actually oh yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and everybody spreads out that's it's really yeah because it's so long everybody spreads out quite okay a bit, so yeah um, 
but I was applying my roadie mentality of being in a big bunch of you know 40, no. 50, 60 riders trying to edge up the side of the road. You couldn't really do that. No, it's definitely but, not that way. But that was so much fun. And the one thing that I finally clicked and got because I don't do a lot of off road. I do virtually none unless I accidentally steer off road uh, unintentionally. There's no cars. Mm -hmm. There's no cars back. That's um, the beauty of gravel riding. You could pick left or right. Ray would go left, I'd go right. We'd sort of switch between the two. You'd see, you just pick different lines. Ray, your thoughts on gravel bikes? Have you done much gravel riding? I have not done much gravel bike. Uh, left, by the way, does here, um, if we can. Uh, no, I haven't done a ton of gravel bikes here and there. Like, I'll stumble into it. But uh, no, that was awesome. Like, I, I, I would love to do more gravel because it's my thing where, like, I am not a super great technical mountain biker. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm a functional road biker. So for me, like this is sort of a good blend where I can still use a lot of the aerobic capacity of um, road biking um, without as much technical for most gravel. Obviously, as we saw yesterday, there's certain sections that are super technical and super, um, you know, you can, you can leverage that technicalness. But uh, for me, I, I had a blast. I was lots of fun. Uh, it's funny though, getting used to those tires, like yeah. trusting those because like I had done a lot of mountain biking the last few months down in South Africa and then so I kind of I understood that tire mm -hmm. and then you see a much smaller tire on gravel and you're like do I trust this it's kind of like a road bike tire and so you're having to like figure out mentally what you can get away with yep. on that tire uh, and then to switch back in the afternoon we went mountain biking again and it was like okay now I'm good again uh, and then this morning back to roads so my brain is kind of like doing just some results of what I can get away with on a given wheel set Still, still getting used to it. And how were the mountain bike rides? So you guys went mountain biking in the afternoon yesterday, and I went and just wandered the uh, the show, the classic, the sort of trade show part. Mountain bike rides good, just as good terrain. I would say yes. the mountain bike ride was probably. I think we, I personally enjoyed the mountain bike ride yesterday more um, because it was desolate. Um, so it wasn't today is Saturday, and yesterday was Friday, obviously, and, and it was much emptier. And so when we went yesterday, we encountered like under one hand's worth of people out there um, and they were all going the correct direction, all that kind of stuff. And mm -hmm. so that was a blast. Like it was just beautiful rolling hills, like the Windows XP screens back from the day, yeah. you know, like the same sort of thing. Um, so that was awesome. Uh, but still mountain biking here is great. It's also nice because it is, isn't super technical. So for me again, coming from a few months in South Africa where it was super technical coming here, it was a little bit of like a step down. Um, so I was a little more comfortable with that since I, like I would love to mountain bike every day if I could, um, but living now in Amsterdam, it's just like a tabletop of a pancake. So I can't do that. Even the places you can ride in the Netherlands aren't anywhere near the mountain biking skill set you would need um, to ride in in places like Cape Town or in, you know the Alps or anywhere else. So yeah. um, for me, when I come to these shows, whether it be in, I guess rest in peace, Interbike, but Interbike or <laughs> or here or yeah. something else I go to, may come back. Maybe. I I take every opportunity I can to mountain bike. Uh, and to like by day two or three, I'm like, oh, okay, I've got my hang of this again. Um, so I'm, at least I'm a little happier that this year I can kind of step into it a little bit better off than I usually am. Yeah, speaking of RIP Interbike and this being the new de facto Interbike, still has a very different feel to Interbike. Everybody, mm -hmm. uh, everybody's asked, Shane, what is Sea Otter? What are you going over for? Is it a, is it a race because they see the race schedule? Is it a trade show because they see all the uh, the companies that will be here? Is it a, just a festival? Is it? And Ray, you called it a. It's the Woodstock of cycling. It's the best way to look at it. I reckon, Des, you agree with that? Yeah, it's I would say so. Chill. Yeah, so I think um, just the thing that differentiates it is that uh, you're going right here, by the way. Definitely being uh, inner bike, uh, definitely being more of a. Uh, trade show and um, Sea Otter being more for the experience of riding a bike, I believe. It's one thing I noticed walking around, it's for the people. So Eurobike this year, hang on, what year are we in? Was Eurobike last year? Yes, Eurobike last year, it all rolls into one. They cut off Consumer Day, which was yeah. one of the funnest days because the people got to go to the trade show and see all the new things and see what they're going to buy. Um, it's more B2B, business to business, more um, yeah, industry focused. Whereas here from day one, people are here. Yep. And they're not just, you know, wandering around looking at what's new. They're racing their bikes. They're riding their bikes. Their kids are on the pump track. <laughs> they're trying gravel for the first time or trying this. It is super cool. It's for the people, but it's also for the industry. Plus, it's also for the families. There's so many families around. Um, uh, if I can put, find the footage and put it in here, the little kids in the pump track, I was told, you know, go watch these little kids and how good they are. They're damn good. They're, it's crazy. <laughs> they're, and you see them everywhere. Like, it's, they're... 
it's just so impressive to see these kids out there with no fear, boys and girls. And there's actually a really cool, like, girls cycling camp, off-road cycling camp going on on the side of the hill right below the dual slalom um, area all day, every day. Um, and to see, like, 40, you know, I would guess, like, under 7, under 10-year-old girls out there just rocking mountain bikes and stuff is yep. awesome. Um, and it's just it's such a cool atmosphere in general here to for for the whole family to be out there and doing stuff it's not like you know realistically when you go to interbike or your bike and if you see the whole family there it's it's like yeah it's like "Mm, yeah yeah. not really the right place for that um here it's like absolutely the right place for it and yeah there's something for everyone all day long to keep busy it's just it's so cool well what i mentioned today in my walkthrough video um is that it's so good to see the kids there with the families and the young because it's kids of all ages not just little tots there's you know all ages through they're the future of the industry. They're the ones who will be working in the industry in 10, 15, 20 years time. But they're also, I mean, they're also the consumers, but it is, yeah, it's really good to see the uh, the whole event embrace that. And the organization of the event, um, there are marshals everywhere. There are sort of um, officials everywhere, even for the parking, that's almost over official, but that's good. We sort of get told where to go. <laughs> even then when we get sent back the run, we won't go into that this morning. But. There was probably five people, I think, at that intersection to tell us to turn back, rather than just the one. Um, there's, I mean, there's a lot going on. <laughs> That's the one hour later. Exactly. <laughs> oh. Just <But> disgruntled. <laughs> everything seems to run really well. Um, people seem to be like having fun out doing the racing, and it's, it's just there seems to be a bit of a spaghetti jungle of routes and courses. I sort of don't even know where to look to cover the, the racing or the riding, or uh, if I had, I've been following wheels to, to go out and find tracks. But there are tracks everywhere. It is so, a maze around here, for sure. Um, so you can get lost very easily. Unlike Eurobike, um, it's not really built for cycling around there, which is funny. It's the world's biggest bike show, but it's not really in an area built for cycling. Um, Interbike in Reno, still not, well, when it was in Reno, still not that good. Vegas may have been a bit okay. If you could have got out to the outskirts, I love the Red Rock Loop in Vegas. Ray, have you done yeah. Red Rock? Yeah, yeah, Red Rock's awesome. Yeah, Des? No, I have not. Put it on your bucket list. It's a super one. You ride out of town through the city limits. You reach the um, Wiley, Wiley E. Coyote sort of area of, um, looks like the car in for me. And it's just these big rock, floor. it's just brilliant. And it's not what you expect. It, there's a bit of a steep section to it. It's a good descent. And anyway, Red Rock Loop, if you know it, awesome. That was near Vegas, um, but this is just perfect for it. This has everything. And as I said, road, mountain, gravel, uh, downhill. Um, what did I miss? The juniors? Dual slalom. Dual slalom. Mm-hmm. Oh, the dual slalom stuff on the hill today. Yeah, yeah. The crowd was three or four deep the whole way down. We could see them on the hill. Yeah, you might be able to see at the very start of this video. So we started this video right in front of the start of the dual slalom. So if you look at the, if you rewind and go look at the right-hand side of the screen yeah, on that side, super, super view out the you side. should be able to see it. It's pretty epic. I may have clipped in a little bit of footage here of that. Zoomed in, because I didn't bring my zoom lens. I've got the other camera, but it is, it is Thousands really Thousands of people up there watching. It's yeah. nuts. It's all good. As for the show, so that answers the question, what is Sea Otter Classic? It is a bike race, or many, many bike races. It is an industry trade show. It is a festival of cycling. It's People are camping out. It is, it's just a mixture of everything. If you're into bikes, there is something here for you. The, and it's not just it's not just like mountain bikes or anything like that no. either. It's just you know, road bikes, gravel bikes, uh, and these are all races too. Yep. So you have dual slalom. Um, I mean, quite literally everything. Road races, and the cool part is all those all those sports, you can go out and ride bikes, demo bikes, anything you want, Mm -hmm. and without cars anywhere. So the road bike courses are no cars, they're on basically like a part national park, part um, military base sort of thing that's totally closed to cars. (laughs) And it does say beware, don't cross the fence, explosives. Yeah. So (laughs) it's awesome. Like we went out for a road ride this morning and it was, you know, we did a, a while and not a single car out there. It was beautiful. So they're not selling very many Garmin Varia radars around here. They just don't need them. Um, all good. Product-wise at the show, one of the main reasons I come over here to talk and you know, have a look at products and cover products and things like that, Ray's the same, Des is the same. Um, not a lot about, but it's not, I mean, it's not a downside of things, it's just not the show. People have announced a few days early, we saw um, Wahoo release colours of their head units. Yep. Uh, yeah, I think we've seen it historically in the past, uh, right here by the way, Des. Um, Historic in the past, this show has become like a, a launching point for new products in the last two to three years. And this is sort of the first year I think that's pulled back a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, th- I think there's a bunch of reasons for that, but this show is starting to become like the replacement for Interbike. And I, I would say that this show is a lot of reason why Interbike has died, um, or at least taken a one year vacation in theory, um, <laughs> is because 
it's positioned so much better. An April time frame was just perfect for the, the cycling industry. Um, people can get away from bike shops for a little bit. Um, this show is also generally more of a you know West Coast audience. Um, certainly there are brands and some and obviously all media, but also some retailers that are flying out here from another country. But by and large, this is pulling from the states in this particular vicinity. Uh, but it's just a better show for some of the product launches. And so we've seen that where major brands in the past, like SRAM has launched a lot of products here where they'll have media bu media events in the days prior. Well, the 4C tap, uh, yep. 4C tap access was a week prior, I think, to the show. Yeah. So there's yep. a few companies just on the outskirts of this and are able to bring that product here and show it off. Um, Ceramic Speed had something as well in the mountain bike area that I'm not across, but they were telling me about it today. Sorry, mountain bikers, I'm not across that tech. Totally to tell you what that is. I've got it on camera. Uh, bike Rumor had it covered. So was, there's a few things here, but nothing yeah. really standard. There's no major launches here. I think everyone's sort of on the outskirts and bring things along. So Ray, this time of year works in the Northern Hemisphere because you guys are on the upswing for the outside lifestyle. And I mean, it's exactly what this show's all about. Yeah, it's a perfect time. I think I think this year, the reason we're not seeing some products launched here in our particular realm of sports tech is that some of the companies we covered have realized that they don't need to launch here. Mm -hmm. um, so like, a lot of smaller brands will launch here because it makes sense. They've got tons and tons of media attention here that can come by and visit their stuff. But um, the larger brands that we tend to cover realize that they can have their own standalone events, which some of them did, um, and they can get the same attention or they can send units directly to media people get the same attention. So I wouldn't say that this like launching season is over. Um, far from it. This launching season is just getting warmed up. Um, but I think companies have realized what makes sense, which is that they don't need to spend a ton of resources here at Sea Otter specifically when they can do the same thing a week later or two weeks later or three weeks later and get this a much bigger focus on their products because they're not crowded with, you know, like a lot of these sites right now have tons and tons of things that are yeah, trying to go yeah, out in a very short time period. Exactly. Yeah. So. If you see any of these media sites say, yeah, if you go to any blog, you're going to have 14 articles about yep. a Lost in the noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah lost in the noise. Absolutely. I've got to say, okay, so here are a few examples of that. The uh, Bontrager Trek Wave Cell helmet was announced, I think, two weeks ago or so. Mm -hmm. Massive hype, probably overhyped for what it was. But, I mean, that's here. That's technology people are looking at and trying on, so that's been pre announced. And, yeah, and that was a standalone today. event. Yep. I, I rubbed someone's head today that had one. Oh, so. I did too. Yeah, yeah you're right. <laughs> um, what else? Um, Expedo, the pedal company, oh. have had a trainer or two trainers. Um, that was at the Taiwan show. I haven't seen them here though. Did they, have they actually started shipping those or is I that just a thought? I think they were, no, they were, they were, there were photos of them on either Bike Room or Cycling Tips. Okay. So they were, are, are around. Um, somebody did point me towards a standard, I think they saw the Exploiver Nosa somewhere. It is yeah. quite hard to find these trainers because it's not an indoor show. Um, Saris is here with the Hammers, uh, Wahoo are here. Any other uh, uh, elite are here? Um, uh, no tax absences is are tax. Yep. However, there is a tax near in the Garmin booth. Oh no, kidding! That's awkward. No. A well, tax near. Oh, in the Garmin booth. I thought you said the Wahoo booth. Sorry. Ah. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm stuck like, it in there. Why I'm is really that not awkward? That seems super awkward to me. That's how tired we are at this point. Um, <laughs> Or it could have been... Well, it's the, kind of awkward yeah. that it is a tax branded product, but people didn't know. They're like, why are you selling... Ta it's not a Garmin branded Neo. Yep. So I'm wondering when we're going to see that, that change over. But there is a reason why the tax Neo is in there. I had a quick chat to the guys in the stand about that, that it's like, oh, good news. And they're super happy. Their range just went into yeah. a different space or further into the cycling space. They said um, way back when that they plan to keep the tax branding for that cycling stuff for, for the foreseeable future. Okay. Um, so they plan to keep that, which makes sense. They said in particular, they were... Uh, branding in Europe is super strong under the tax branding. Um, uh, not that Garmin's branding isn't super strong anywhere in the world, but still, it's. I think that's what they're hoping to for now. But obviously, things could could change longer term. So we'll see. Yep. Um, other than that, yeah, as I was saying, not not many product launches. Um, nothing special. I did, however, pick up some. I'll just go through my swag bag now. Um, <laughs> some hot sauce. There are some random, most random things you'll pick up here. Um, some hot sauce from the Truckee Dirt Fondo. I'm not sure why I do it front of we give hot sauce up there. Anyway, any way to market stuff. Well, I'm talking about it, so there we go. That's a win. There you go. <laughs> I got my, uh, I got one thing of swag, which is my beer cup from just moments ago. Oh, yes, um, we went to Cliff. It's um, now empty, so if you're not. Uh, I filled mine with Cliff bars. Yep. That was all good. Um, I also stood near the fo Fox, a big Fox, uh, Fox mountain bikes. That's the brand, the brand is Fox. Uh, Fox yeah. suspension? Yes. Yes. Sure. Fox suspension. Mm -hmm. Or Fox Racing, I think is actually That's what they the call one. It. Yeah. They stood up on top of their um, stand, 
it's a big, big stand they have. So there was a, they were able to stand on top of it. Um, got a massive crowd of people around. Had probably two to 300 people standing around and they were throwing free gear out. That's why people were standing around. And they then put out a fork and everyone's like, throw it, throw it. They drew, drew a tick. I'm not going to throw a fork out in front of everyone. I was standing there just filming like, the amount of people there just to show how big this event was. And uh, I had a t-shirt land on my shoulder. It came off the, off the uh, another building thing there, went around, sort of surfed around the roof and landed straight on my shoulder and stuck there. Some guy actually grabbed it and goes, oh, no, sorry. Dude, <laughs> when a shirt lands on someone, yeah. it's pretty much mine. Don't take it off yeah. me. I sort of grabbed it. And I'm like, dude, dude. It's, yeah. it's, it it's was fine, but it's just instinctively, because you instinctively grab stuff that's been yeah. thrown. So, yeah. yeah. Personal space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, hang on, I wish he had numbers. It's like he's buying me dinner. No. <laughs> but I have a, I have a free T-shirt. Um, that was pretty cool. But there's a lot of other freebies around. Um, lollies and things, stickers, and uh, more cliff bars than one can eat. Yes. Yeah, you you are on the um, your current ratio of intake to uh, acceptance is, is pretty strong in your favor right now. I think you've got enough to last you what like at least four days. How many do you think you've consumed this week so far? Shane? This I'm at least twenty. Consumed? What? Yeah. Consumed or or consumed? Uh, like consumed. Consumed. Not, not purchased. No, well, purchased. Not, not acquired. This, this week? Wow. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Easy done. Three, four a day, five maybe. If I'm hungry. That's pretty epic. That's. Their energy, I'm full of energy. It's concerning. <laughs> <laughs> and I do have like a, yeah, a ton of them to take home. Um, I ate all Vons. I take Von home, uh, a, a big um, catalogue of ones that we don't have, the carrot cake ones and the, the um, is it the gingerbread ones or whatever they are? But anyway, I think that's the first time I've ever heard Cliff Bars uh, and catalog in the same yeah. sentence. <laughs> you haven't seen the gourmet range? Do you have a catalog? For, like, can you walk in the booth and just ask, like, from a retail standpoint, can I see your catalog of Cliff Bars, please? <laughs> it's, it, it's like In N Out Burger. There's a secret menu. You didn't, I can't believe anyone knew about this. Anyhow, I've got a whole bag of Cliff Bars to take home, so that should be good. <laughs> cool, cool. All right, that wraps up our drive for today. We're almost home. It's time to record our podcast. So plug for the podcast, DCR, GP Lama podcast called The Fit File with special guest Des from Des Fit today. So we'll loop Des in on that. So We've we'll got get... a bunch of tech specific things coming up on that. So like this is a more general discussion. This is just us bantering. We're going to we're gonna dive into some of the tech of the last week, some of the things that have popped up. Uh, I think there's a fair bit of things to talk about actually. A lot of things to talk about in the last seven We've days. had to cull the list, but um, we'll be yeah. back next week with things that don't make it this week. But it'll be sort yep. of, I guess, show focused and what we're on about. And uh, yeah. yeah, so stay tuned for that on over on the podcast. Again, I'll link below to the podcast. We may throw some cameras on for that. We'll see how we go. But anyway, boys, thanks for coming along for the drive. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for thanks for driving. <laughs> I'm just sitting. I'm still sitting. Bikes are still here. The bikes are still here. We haven't had any incidents. That's so good. By the way, this is payback for when they stuck me in the back in Amsterdam <laughs> 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 with a pallet jack. So this is payback for that one right there. Good news. We got to the gas station. I was wondering. You may have heard earlier. Oh, no, we skipped the gas station. Okay. Oh, yeah. You may have heard like 10 minutes ago there was a ding ding and it was the low fuel um, empty warning left message up there. Just so. the, car, the car runs on cliff bars. Though. If the car can run on cliff bars, we'll just shove those down there. I'm sure. I'm so sure. we're not going to gas station. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to keep on pushing this one. Hot yeah. sauce? Huh? We can run the car on hot sauce. It's all good. <laughs> it's a flux capacitor. It's not an electronic car. No. no. The so. last time we were in, sorry, an electric car. Last time we were in a, an EV, yeah. Us and cars? Yeah. What's the go, boys? Two wheels. Yeah, I think we should stick yeah. to bikes. Anyway, yeah. so should you. Thanks for watching, and we'll be back with more very soon. Thanks, boys. Thanks. See ya.